And hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Florida Horse Podcast. Our guest today, David O'Farrell with uh, Ocala Stud. And welcome, David. Thank you, Brock. Glad to be here. Uh, Ocala Stud obviously has uh, got a long history of uh, outstanding uh, stallions here in Florida, uh, going back to Rough and Tumble almost 70 years ago, Notebook, Trippy, uh, Montbrook, uh, more recently High Cotton, horses like that, Cantheros. Um, but we have some new horses on the horizon here, uh, Roadster and Gretzky the Great. Uh, first, let's talk about Roadster a little bit. Um, Roadster, of course, ran in California. He's owned by a couple of Texans. How does a horse like that get to Florida? Well, we just feel very fortunate. We've partnered with Brett Jones and Airdrie Stud um, on many horses over the last few years, and um, it's been a great working partnership. Um, and uh, we feel like the horse really suits our market here in Florida. He could be a standout. Um, he has everything that we look for in a stallion prospect. He's going to get a tremendous support from his ownership, and we just feel like he's tremendous value and a great opportunity for Florida breeders. You talked about uh, some of the things that uh, make him attractive to Florida breeders. Of course, he ran in California, won the Santa Anita Derby. What were some of the traits that you saw in Roadster on the racetrack that you think will be attractive to uh, mare owners here in Florida? Well, first and foremost, he's by Quality Road, um, who's in the prime of his career, a uh, tremendous sire, uh, has great, great commercial appeal. Um, he had nearly 30 yearlings, average over 600,000 this, this past September sale. Um, they're performing on the racetrack at the highest level. Uh, the one thing that, that I think really attracted us to Roadster was his precocity. Uh, he broke his maiden in July of his two-year-old season very fast, uh, ran a very good number, um, backed that up with a second to eventual champion game winner in his second start. Uh, and then turn the tables on game winner, stretching out at uh, the classic distance in the Santa Anita Derby as a three-year-old, uh, beating a good field, um, going to Kentucky Derby as one of the post-time favorites. Um, so he's a very accomplished horse, and uh, we, we just, again, feel extremely fortunate to be able to bring him to Florida and present him to breed. You talked about he is by Quality Road. Of course, he's out of a uh, silver, silver ghost mare. Uh, what were some of the things in the pedigree that you think uh, people need to really uh, zero in on? Well, he was bred by Stone Farm, um, one of the best breeders in the, in the industry. Um, he's a half to a grade one winner ascend. Um, really neat pedigree, second dams by Red Ransom. I think it's very important in today's world that stallions – uh, possess the, the ability to give you versatility. Um, he was a dirt horse, uh, did all of his running on the dirt, uh, but he does have turf influence on the bottom side of his pedigree, uh, which I think, you know, bodes well for the future. Um, you, I think it's important that stallions are able to go both ways in today's world. They're, they're riding more races for turf. Um, so I think it stallions that are able to produce progeny, on on multiple surfaces um, have a better chance for success talk about uh, some of the mares that you may have already lined up for roadster um, and uh, maybe what type of mare do you think will work best with roadster you know i think you could breed a lot of different types of mares to him he's a beautiful individual he sold for five hundred and twenty-five thousand as a yearling uh, moret farrell bought him on behalf of speedway stables Moret's one of the best judges in the game. Um, she's a tremendous bloodstock agent, and um, and he's just a beautiful horse. He's a pretty gray, uh, which I think is neat. Um, and he's just he's very correct, very good confirmation, very classy, um, sensible, and uh, just the right sized horse. He's not overly big. He's not small. He's just a good medium-sized horse, and I think he's going to appeal to a lot of people and a lot of different mares. Fantastic. Now, the exciting news doesn't stop with Roadster at Ocala Stud. Uh, we also have Gretzky the Great uh, is going to be uh, standing his first season there. Uh, talk about uh, how he, how that deal came to part. Of course, he was with Eclipse Thoroughbred Partners, and uh, how did that deal come about? So Gretzky the Great was trained by Mark Cassie, who's a, a very good uh, family friend and um, you know, we've, we've grown up, the O'Farrells and Cassie families have, have been close for a long time. And, uh, Mark, when he presents a stallion prospect to us, 
He means business. He, I take his word for it. You don't have to do much thinking. He knows what suits us and he knows what works. And he really believes in the horse. Um, he's a beautiful horse. He was a very good two-year-old. Um, he did win a grade one on the turf at Woodbine. Uh, but his pedigree really suggests dirt, top and bottom. He's by Nyquist, who is a sire line that we really believe in. Nyquist was champion two-year-old, went on to become Derby winner at three. Um, and Nyquist is by Uncle Mo, who was also champion two-year-old. So it's a sire line that I think suits Florida. Um, it's a sire line that I think is going to continue to get better. And, um, and I think this horse had a lot of um, ability as a two-year-old and I think he presents Florida breeders a, a, a great um, value play with a first-year sire. What type of mares do you think are going to work great with or best with Gretzky the Great? You know that's something that um, that sire line is is pretty much an outcross to anything and everything um, being by Nyquist who's by Indian Charlie, who's by NXS, I think that um, appeals to a lot of different sire lines, bloodlines. Um, he is out of a young Bernardini mare. Bernardini's off to the, the best start as broodmare sire, I think this decade. So um, he does have things in his pedigree that give you a lot of confidence. And, and I think he should appeal to a wide, wide range of broodmares. Anybody can look at your record for um, uh, young stallions, and uh, uh, it's it's a solid record. Um, the two young stallions that you had this year were Gervin and Awesome Slew. It looks like Gervin is a runaway in the uh, uh, freshman sire race here in Florida, but Awesome Slew, of course, has um, Awesome Strong going to the Breeders' Cup. If Awesome Strong has a, uh, a big day at, at uh, say, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, that race could be a lot closer. Talk about those two young sires. You know, it's been a great year. Uh, both of them got off to tremendous starts. Gervin had just a tremendous amount of support from his ownership uh, to get off the ground. Brad Grady and, and Brett Jones from Airdrie, uh, they gave the horse a tremendous amount of support, as did the Florida Breeders and ourselves. And um, it showed he's he's just a, a very good sire. They're all competitive. They're very sound horses um, and and they um, they run. Um, they're very sensible. They're just good horses to be around. And, and, and there's a lot of activity. There's a lot on the work tab. There's a lot running, a lot winning races and they're winning all over the country. They're winning in California, New York, South Florida. Um, so he's he's giving. He's giving everyone all the signs that 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 you look for in a in a promising young sire, and um, I think the sky's the limit with him. So those Florida breeders that uh, believed in Gervin early on are really reaping the benefits of uh, his success now, aren't they? They really are. They really are, and they will for a couple of years to come. Uh, the folks that bred to him this past season. Well, let's talk about Awesome Slew. I mean, he's uh, certainly had a good year this year. Uh, awesome Strong, of course, is his uh, top runner when uh, swept the Florida Sire Stakes this year. Uh, awesome Slew, talk about some of the, the traits that he has that you, that you like, and what are some of his strong points? He's another one. Um, you know, I think he has a tremendous amount of upside. It's a sire line that we believe in, uh, being by Awesome again, um, who's also the sire of Ghost Sapper, who's been a, a very, very good stallion. Um, he's got a wonderful bottom side pedigree. His first four dams were all stakes winners and all multiple stakes producers. Um, it's, it's, it's really good blood. Um, and he was such a good, durable, sound racehorse. He was very versatile himself. Um, he won graded stakes from seven furlongs to a mile on the 16th. And he won or, won or placed in, in 12 graded stakes over nine different racetracks. He's just a very good, honest, sound, uh, well-bred horse. And um, I think he's got a, a tremendous future. I think his fee is very reasonable, um, and and he's a horse that uh, has a ton of upside. Now we talk about Awesome Slew. Of course, he uh, raced for um, Mrs. Charlotte Weber at uh, Live Oak uh, Plantation. Um, there's another horse at uh, Ocala Stud with the Live Oak connections, and that's Win Win Win. Uh, he's kind of a uh, tell us a little bit about him and, and uh, what uh, Florida breeders can, should like about him. He's an interesting horse. He has beautiful weanlings, uh, first crop weanlings this year. 
he's he's a horse that that uh, we competed with Airdrie over. So we partnered up with Charlotte and Live Oak, and um, and Airdrie is a partner as well. And um, you know he he was very fast, very versatile, um, and is by an interesting sire line himself. He's by Hat Trick, who was a, a great miler. Hat Trick was by Sunday Silence. Um, and I think the novelty of, of the Sunday silence bloodline coming back, um, is really unique. And the other thing I like about his pedigree is his bottom side, his first two dam sires were Kentucky Derby winners. Um, first dam sire, Smarty Jones, second dam sire unbridled. So he has thir three Derby winners up close in his pedigree with Sunday silence on top. And, um, but he was very fast and very versatile. Um, and a beautiful horse. Of course, that unbridled, that's the old Florida bred bloodlines uh, going back to Fapiano and all of that. So that's always kind of fun to circle back around uh, to, to bring back some of that blood back home, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, one of the horses that I always kind of like that you have standing out there and uh, is uh, Adios Charlie. He was uh, uh, a horse that uh, had a, a pretty good year this year at the two-year-old sales. Tell me a little bit about him. Well, he's our working man, sire. He's just really good business, been been kind of our blue collar horse. We've been able to earn a living with Adios Charlie. Um, his numbers are very good. He hasn't, you know, from the from the very beginning, uh, we weren't able to get big crops to him early on, but his horses sold well and they performed at the racetrack. And he he's a horse that has a bit of a following. Um, a lot of repeat customers, people who have bred to him. Um, are typically happy and, and they come back to him. He's great value. And I call him the poor man's Uncle Mo, being by Indian Charlie. Um, Uncle Mo being by Indian Charlie. And he, he kind of is the poor man's Uncle Mo. His stats are very good. Um, and and he's, just a, he's just been a really neat horse. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of exciting things going on out there at Ocala Stud. That's a that's a tradition that's uh, uh, very difficult to, to keep going because it's a very strong tradition. But with horses like Roadster and Gretzky the Great, uh, Awesome Slough, Win, Win, Win. I mean, it sounds like there's a bright future for Florida breeders uh, when they uh, continue to go to Ocala Stud for their, for their stallions. Uh, David, I want to thank you for stopping by today. Continued success. Thanks to David again, and thank you for stopping by. And uh, we'll see you later, folks. You can stay up to date with all of your thoroughbred racing and breeding news from Florida and around the country with a free subscription to Wire to Wire. And sign up to receive Wire to Wire, delivered free of charge to your inbox five days a week. <laughs>